Seven days ago, we had a good one last Thursday between the Packers and the Eagles. Philly looking like the team that many have pegged potentially to go to the Super Bowl before the season. And Mike Garofalo has more on these Eagles as they get set for the Jets. Thank you, Kay. Well, the Eagles preparing for Sunday's game against the Jets, still basking in the glow of last week's victory over the Green Bay Packers, not just because it evened their record at 2-2, two and two, but also because of how they played, particularly offensively. They were able to get that running game going, a season-high 176 yards for a rushing attack that was sputtering and inconsistent at times, particularly rookie running back Miles Sanders. He went for 72 yards on 11 carries, including a 30-yard run. This team had had confidence in San and said that they would stick by him despite his struggles and his fumbling issues while well, he finally performed for them. Quarterback Carson Wentz saying that he told Sanders even before week one, you're here for a reason. You belong here. Well, Sanders finally showed that, so they're hopeful that this means it's the beginning of an extended run of good runs from Sanders and this rushing attack because so much of what they do, the RPO and the play-action game predicated on a strong running game, okay? Cannot wait for that one. We don't know when Sam Darnold will be back, but we are hoping to see the Jets do something here on the East Coast. Uh, the other game on the East Coast, of course, the Giants hosting the Vikings. Let's preview some of these games. Okay. The headlines going on around the league with a little would you rather. Uh, okay. Game in uh, so you can get a lot of trouble playing this game. Sure, so we're not going to do that here. If you were to ask me where there wouldn't be any sort of drama ever during the season, I would probably point to Minnesota and the Vikings. There never seems to be any up yeah. there under Zimmer. Well, there is some turmoil with the Vikings. Adam Thielen was a bit frustrated with the state of the passing game. Kirk Cousins publicly issued an apology on Minnesota local radio. And now Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer weighs in on that Cousins apology. That's where we are. He was probably just being nice. I mean, I mean, seriously, I'm not worried about it. Maybe you should get off the podcast. Hey. <laughs> oh, he smiled. He gave a little smile at the end I think there. it was an attempt at levity. There's a lot going on up there. A lot in of Minnesota. troops said in jest. It seems like that. So they'll take on the Giants uh, this week. Both sit at 2-2. Two and two. New York has won two straight since turning things over to Daniel Jones. So which quarterback would you rather have for the rest of the year? Nate, Kirk Cousins, or Daniel Jones? I'm going with Kirk Cousins. And I'll say this. I did see a little smile at the end of uh, Zimmer saying that, but he was keeping it real. Um, and maybe there's a lot of guys that shouldn't be talking to the radio or going on podcasts and basically airing out all of the family laundry from every organization. Back in my day, we didn't do that. We kept everything in-house. But Daniel Jones is good. He had a couple of good moments over the last couple of weeks. But, okay, he just got here. Mm. He just got to the party. Mm -hmm. Kirk Cousins has been playing those dad tunes for the last four years. So I'm going with Kirk Cousins. Out of respect for what he has done so far in his career, I won't, I won't do that to him. Okay. I'm not going to be flippant and say, well, what's he done? But I'm going to be f less flippant and say, we want to talk about situation. Daniel Jones is the toast of his town. The fan base loves him. He's got a coach who's got a new lease on life with this guy under center. He's got Golden Tate coming back, and he's got a team that's won two games in a row. Minnesota seems like it's melting under Cousins right now, and Cousins is apologizing publicly. So I would say give me the situation of what Daniel Jones is stepping into this week as opposed to Kirk Cousins, which, I mean, Kirk Cousins went through ups and downs. This could be the, the Najir right now. I mean, this kid's as low as it gets. Too, Peter? And, and, you know, Saquon's coming back. Look at that. You know, like, Saquon's coming back. Maybe not this week, but he's coming back a little earlier than expected. Give me the Daniel Jones, and I'll take all the uh, glass half full over whatever's going on in Minnesota right now, in jest or not in jest. Any coach talking about my podcast, okay. and I'm a $100 million man. I don't want to hear that. Oh, okay. Oh, right. <laughs> and by the way, just yeah. a flesh wound. Saquon already maybe coming back this week. This, this is the greatest guy. He's not history. human on the other I love Saquon. Well, how are you taking it? The situation, yeah. or which quarterback would you want more? Because well, situationally, guess... he's got the Vikings, and he's got the True. Patriots on Thursday night. True. My situation is, and I have to put, I, I happen to, I've been on Kirk Cousins' podcast. Yeah. It's really well run, and there was no airing out of any laundry, Nate. We talked about if he's going to have a stick figure family in the back of his minivan. That's <laughs> all it was. It's a great podcast. Um, I'm going to go with Cousins. If I could trade places with one, first of all, I'll take his game check every day. And he has, look, he's got Thielen and Diggs, and you know, there was this debate yesterday. Do you respect him more or less for apologizing publicly? And I think Peter had the right take. Kirk Cousins can only be himself. You cannot. Kirk Cousins has done, he's been the same guy his whole career, going back to Barrington, Illinois as a high schooler. He's not going to suddenly be some sort of hard ass. Very talented. And guys, by the way, they don't have to play the 
Bears again until week 17, so that helps too. I'll go Cousins. Cousins for the win. Yep. Uh, were you a little personally offended when you saw that Zimmer? A little bit. It's a good podcast. I've been in some bad ones. Uh, this is good. <laughs> Perhaps no better matchup this weekend than a pair of the NFL's marquee franchises squaring off in Dallas. The Packers and the Cowboys both sit at 3-1, and one, both coming off losses, though, in week four. Peter, would you rather yeah. roll with the Packers or the Cowboys the rest of the way? Ooh. Uh, I'll stake my lot on Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say Packers. I thought they lost that game Thursday night, and you can question the play calling. You can question the defense. You can't question what version of Aaron Rodgers we got. I feel like that was Aaron Rodgers waking up suddenly in week four. Like, wait a second. What? Oh, I'm Aaron Rodgers. Let mm -hmm. me do Aaron Rodgers things. I will always roll with Aaron Rodgers. And ironically, he's had a lot of success over the Cowboys in his career. Yep particularly against Dak Prescott. So give me a three and one, both teams right here at the quarter mark. Give me the Packers and LaFleur, who's never coached a head coaching big battle in January over Jason Garrett, who's been in a million. I think Aaron Rodgers is a difference. I'm going to go with Jason. I think Aaron Rodgers is a much better player, but I think the Cowboys are a better team. And you know, you know why? Aaron Rodgers makes $31 million more than Dak Prescott. Right? $31 million <laughs> more. It's crazy. Uh, I'm going to go quickly. I'm just going to go Cowboys. Plus, Devontae Adams is banged up right now as the Packers' best wide receiver. The Cowboys are healthy. They're loaded. I'll go with these guys. So the roster you're saying top to bottom is I think it's better than the Packers, Packers right now. That's I do. Fair. Yeah, it's one thing to say that Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback than Dak Prescott, which we all can agree on. But when you talk about total offense, which the Cowboys are ranked number three, we talk about running attack, which the Cowboys are ranked number five. Mm -hmm. They have a better offense than the, uh, than Aaron Rodgers. Did you watch the NFL worked. last week? Because I saw an offense that was sputtering and was awful against the Saints. And to the fact that I'm questioning what Kellen Moore's genius actually is that they couldn't get anything going against a Drew Brees-less Saint. So the first three weeks, you're going to high-five and compliment Kellen Moore, yes. and then one week, he takes a drop, and all of a sudden, yes. you're off the bandwagon? I feel like that about the Green Bay Packers defense. It was stout for three That's weeks, and then all of a sudden, Miles Sanders and Jordan Howard tough run night. wild on them, so yes. I'm a little concerned about what they've got going on after one week. Tough Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Kellen Moore and the Cowboys defense. will adjust. I guarantee you that. What do you think? At GMFB like with it. your answers, please. Sunday in Houston, arguably the two best receivers in the game will be sharing the field. Julio Jones and the Falcons taking on DeAndre Hopkins and the Texans. Kyle, both teams, yeah, they need to win yeah, they pretty do. badly. Would you rather have Julio or DeAndre? Well, I watch the NFL every week. And <laughs> ah, there used to be a Moss versus T.O. debate all the time, and I was always a T.O. guy because of what T.O. did after the catch. The event would start, and I think that's why I go Julio. I think Julio is slightly more talented, and he's much better after the catch. They're both great. I'll go Julio, though. I'll go DeAndre Hopkins. Okay. You know, I just love the fact that his hand size gives him a chance to catch any ball. That 50-50 contested pass, he's going to go up and get it. I feel like DeAndre Hopkins is a pure catcher. Um, Julio Jones is a pure athlete. What's Julio's hands like? Rex Grossman? No, no, no. no, 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 no. I, 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 think, I just think he's a pure catcher. Julio Jones is still one of the greatest. Haven't you know, heard his Julio high school story? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I've seen uh, I've seen Julio Jones make maybe three of the greatest catches mm. I've ever seen in my life. Two of them in person in a Super Bowl uh, when he had the outstretched one before Edelman yeah, sure. had the drive. Yeah. The, the, I'm going to go Julio, but you can't go wrong with both these guys. Wrong. But actually, Julio is better. It's <laughs> wild to me that these two have only faced off against each other once before. It was back in 2015. Here's how it went. Hopkins had nine grabs for a buck 57. Wow. Julio just four for 38. The winner, though, was the Falcons. Mm, ah. uh, up next, we're going to go on a man hunt for a superstar performance this weekend. Which player is most wanted? Oh, you had homework. Yeah, we had homework. I had to go to the gas station, buy a dip. <laughs>